So here we are at the end of another year, and this is just a good time to collect data, to uh, find out where we are with things, to share experience. Uh, we've got a poll, and many of you have filled it out. We're not going to talk about that today, but what we are going to talk about is to let you know where I am in music income after the year of 2022 and uh, just to to let you get a sense of what it is that uh, is happening with with someone else who is in this kind of business um, this is uh, again just my experience and we do have some information coming from other people that we're uh, doing a poll and you can find that in the description below, but we'll talk about that in a little while. But hey, let's get right into this. If you're a musician, if you want to get some music income and you want to tr try to figure out how to make music income as a side hustle, as a full-time business, that's what this channel is all about. So make sure you subscribe if you're new here. But Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right to this and talk about my music income for uh, the year of 2022. Now, uh, it was a relatively good year. Um, a lot of new music incomes for me that I've talked about throughout the year. A lot of unique, uh, interesting, uh, I don't know what you'd say, uh, experiments that I did. And uh, so... I'm going to start with the one that probably everyone wants to know about when they first come to a channel like this, especially the people who are trying to do side hustle type things. And one of those is stock music licensing. Now, stock music is by far, or not by far, uh, well, by far one of the least incomes for me from music. But uh, this is one that I know a lot of people are doing well on, and I know some people are very interested in as an intro to how to make some music income. It's it's probably the the easiest thing to get into as a uh, music maker in order to make some music income. And so, uh, at first glance, now this is going to be to look much worse. And I'm going to call up my uh, my trusty. Uh, Excel sheets here, and we're going to look at my income from stock music or what I call my royalty free income, because this is all in stock music. Some of this is income that has come from not just my stock libraries, but also money that is in other places like Content ID or Song Trader, which figured very big in this year's uh, numbers. So uh, I'll take you through, and, and this is probably the place where I'm going to show you actual numbers first um, and, and real actual numbers. So let me present that to you here and share my screen and let you see what I'm talking about. Okay, so um, if you watch this show, this exact same show last year, and uh, why I don't have my video up, I don't know. Um, if you watch this same show last year, you saw me talking about these numbers that are here on top with a total in stock music and royalty-free income of $4,485.63. Not a bad uh, year. And that included libraries like Motion Array, like Audio Jungle, like Audio Sparks and Pond5 and Song Trader, 123RF, VFine Music, uh, and audio 100 audio the the ones down below here never really paid me uh, except for motion elements the only ones that paid me last year were these which which is about which is about 4300 so only about a hundred bucks did not pay me from last year because uh, I haven't reached the threshold yet to get paid from that library but that can show you from last year as you can see, the biggie here was Motion Array. And as we look at Motion Array for that year, sorry, um, we can see that it was a nice total at the end. And now, if we come down to 2022, you can also see what a change, what a difference a year can make. Um, let's get away from the yearly, the monthly total here for a second. 
All right, it's wanting to be weird. Okay, so um, it started out not bad at 300 bucks a month um, in January, but it quickly fell. Now, why did it fall? Well, most of you watching this know why it fell, and that is because Motion Array greatly changed how much uh, the way that they paid out um, royalties. And so um, it went uh, just completely different. And as you can see, I made less than half of what I made in 2022 or so far at least. Um, it's, it's certainly gonna be less than half. I made 3,000, over 3,000 in 2021, less than 1,300 so far this year. Now, here's the interesting part, some other things have come along to help me make music income this year. One of those is content ID, which is sitting at about 400 bucks so far with about three months left to report. I've actually received at least one check from content ID and content ID. If you don't know what that is, it is a, um, a way for you to be paid. If someone is using your music on a video on YouTube, YouTube, here's that you um, sign up with a company I'm signed up with Identify and um, they have uh, really come through this year, especially with one video that really made a lot of money. Now, you can see that September came back to earth a lot with only 10 bucks or so uh, from Content ID, whereas July was $110. But um, this is where we sit right now with Content ID. And then another surprise, I mean, last year it was all Motion Array Audio Jungle, Audio Sparks did well because I had a few big sales and Pond5. And, and these are the usual suspects, Motion Array, Audio Jungle, Pond5 in uh, stock licensing. But in this year, um, Content ID has now taken over the second slot and the third slot is taken over by Song Trader, which uh, last year I, not only did I pay them $49 to be part of them for a year. Maybe actually I had two accounts, so I paid $50, $100 and I made $137. So I only made a profit of $37. This year, Song Trader, I decided one of my experiments was not to pay them and do the free tier on Song Trader. And so I did the free tier. And, and uh, so far this year, it's paid out about $355 in different things. Now, if you want to see what song trader is and how I made this money. I go into it in my song trader video. I'll put it right up here, or you can go search for it on the channel um, where I talk about all the different opportunities that song trader has for your music. So you might want to check that out because it's paid off for me this year and I didn't even pay to be part of it. I just used their free tier. And so song trader is number three. Um, Pond5 has done much better for me this year. And this is kind of funny. Last year, Pond5 did 172.49, and uh, it took a while to get started. I started only started stock music licensing at the beginning of 2021, or end of 2020, maybe. But you can see that Pond5 paid out 172 last year, and this year they've already, uh, I've already made almost $300 there. It should be about a $300 year there with Pond5. So that has gone up. And what's funny, I said it was funny. What's funny, and this is funny, um, is that I did, I put stuff down at $5 most of the year. I, I Last year, I put everything, at, as I was told by the stock music licensing gurus, to keep stuff up at 40, 50. Um, you know, that's, that's uh, really what I was trying to do, is trying to keep... Um, trying to keep prices up last year. This year I brought them way down and I'm, I've so far I've made almost twice as much. Yeah, I'll definitely make, uh, I'll probably make just a little under twice as much on Pond5 this year. So like it or not, the uh, and plus Pond5 went subscription this year. So I think the only way that you're gonna see success on Pond5, I might be wrong. And maybe some of you have different, um, different experiences there. If you do, let me know. But my experience is that um, I am I'm seeing less. I'm seeing more sales at $5 or $10 or $9 or whatever I've been pricing them at uh, than I did at 50. And uh, so I'm seeing more consistent income from them this year. 
Audio Jungle is actually more than than this because I have two Audio Jungle accounts, a non-exclusive and an exclusive. You put them together, it's about two hundred seventy-six dollars. Still less. Did I put the right one? Yeah, still less than Pond Five. So Pond Five has paid out more than Audio Jungle this year. Also, I have changed all my prices on Audio Jungle. Again, I, I don't know if, if that's the right move for Audio Jungle. Maybe Audio Jungle, it's better to keep prices up higher. But Audio Jungle also has a subscription service called Envato Elements I'm not on. And that seems to be where people are getting most of their audio. But uh, Audio Sparks this year for me has been pretty disappointing. Um, I'm, I'm now doing only what they call radio sparks with them. Um, and, and that's what all this money is throughout this year. It's good for five to 10 bucks a month. It's probably average, uh, seven bucks average looks like. Um, but it, it's, it's not going to be, uh, something that's going to do it. Last year, I had a couple hundred dollar sales on there of songs of leases for use. Uh, I have not seen that at all this year. And uh, as most of you know, at the beginning of this year, I decided that I was going to put less time into stock music and not spend so much time on it if it was only going to pay a very, very small part of my income. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But um, I think it's it's really important to know that you've got to be careful with how much time you spend on this, especially if this is only a side hustle for you like it is for me. Um, it's a place to put catalog that is not going to sync licensing. That is not uh, exclusive anywhere else. And I just throw all my non-exclusive stuff in there. Now, am I doing stock music the right way? That's a whole other discussion that we'll have on another day. Um, the next thing that has paid me, surprisingly, coming up this year into the number eight, seven spot is Motion Elements which I barely made anything off last year and uh, made 10 times as much this year thanks to their global subscription program. And actually, I actually had a sale. I actually had a sale. And then under them is a new library this year. The only new library to really uh, pay out to me is Yummy Sounds. Of all the new libraries I tried, I tried like six new libraries, including Yummy Sounds, Music Case, Jamendo, um, uh also, Infinity, uh, several other new ones I tried this year. Uh, the only one to actually pay me money is Yummy Sounds uh, of $62.64. Um, after that, the rest of these are, are ones that I've made something on this year but not paid, which is about $75. They've, I, I haven't reached the threshold to be paid uh, by them again this year. So... Um, that's where stock stands, as you can see. Now, here's the super interesting thing about stock for me this year, the difference in uh, that. Obviously, Motion Array is a huge difference from $3,000 to about $1,250. But if you take Motion Array away and you just look at my last year on um, just all the other ones, last year I made... $1,374 on everything else other than Motion Array. This year, I made $1,633 on everything other than Motion Array. So everything else other than Motion Array, as far as the whole of stock licensing, has grown, has, has, has come up with limited amount of work. In other words, I put new stuff up, and I usually will try to get it to most of them. Uh, that don't take a lot of my time. Audio Sparks takes a lot of my time. Um, Gemendo takes a lot of my time to put these up there. But I usually will make sure Song Trader takes a lot of time to put up. I'm, I'm still in the midst of getting everything up this year from Song Trader. But with it being the third income, I am really putting that stuff up there um, and, 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 and trying to figure out how to get more uh, stuff to uh, song trader because it has paid it really paid off for me all right so uh now all that said i think it's important that you know something here um all that said it's important that you know that stock music for me was three percent of my music income this year in 2022 
Now you might be saying, 3%, how much money do you make? Well, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about percentages and, and what I all the other things that I do because I won't be getting as into those some of those because those are personal and private, but I, I can talk about percentages of my income. But that's where I am with stock music this year. Um, and I do want to say that, uh, let me go ahead and put it down here because I do have a poll that we are trying to find out what your income, music incomes were in 2022. And so far that poll is taking off and you can find that in the description below. It's a survey monkey poll and you can just go there, take that survey. It's just 10 questions. Take it real quick and let us know because next week I'll be doing one on what you guys are making your money on and uh, delving into those numbers. Either Steve and I will do that or uh, I will do that in next week's video, but that's going to be very interesting because that continues to uh, get tons of people doing it. So go down and into the description and take that poll. You should find it down there. Um, so yeah, uh, Pond5 was up with uh, stock music licensing and uh, Audio Jungle combined was about the same. Uh, it was less than Pond5 this year. Motion Array, um, I am not focusing at, like some people are on making exactly what motion array is looking for as far as the higher paying stuff they gladly take my stuff i just had three things accepted to motion array last week and they continue uh to pay me and i i get about to level four every month not crazy but remember one thing i want to make very clear and, and the reason this is three percent for me is because i put this is my music, folks. This is not yours. This is not Stevie B's. This is not any of you who make five hundred a month on there, who make uh, who make a thousand or a crazy two thousand dollars a month. It can be made on stock music income. I know literally people uh, that you know that I do a podcast with that make that kind of money from time to time, and uh, I do not. But I also don't work it in that same way, and I don't compose focus on that kind of stuff right now. All right, so let's see. I've got some people here joining us, and I'm just going to run through who's here today. Arco, first in the room, as usual. Iso is here. Rhett is here from Mix Club. Andreas, nice to see you again. We were just talking uh, through Zoom just a minute ago. Fabio, thank you for being here from Brazil. Uh, Marley, just got done talking to you, my friend Marcus. Um, uh, Axmar Beats, great. Uh, greetings from Hunza. Cool. Uh, zombie. New around these parts. Well, glad to have you here. Uh, Daydreams in the house. Um, okay, so here's some questions. Arco says, does Audio Sparks pay quarterly? Um, yes, they pay quarterly, but for the quarter behind the quarter. So it's like two quarters back or something like that. Um, and again, you have to reach a threshold of, I think, $25 which is not easy to reach if you're only making five bucks a month. Uh, but remember, with Audio Sparks, very, very important to remember, they you can never take stuff out of Audio Sparks once you put it in. And so if you ever, ever plan to take your music out of these libraries, uh, which is somewhat easy to do with Pond5, um, Audio Jungle, even Motion Array will let you take it out after a certain number of days. But Audio Sparks requires for you to leave it in forever. Um, do they forward you a monthly statement? No, you have to go in and look at your statements on the site. Uh, Fabio says, do you know if someone in Audio Jungle is accepting new composers? They are not. They are still not. And I'm starting to think they're just not going to. I think they uh, have reached the, uh, capacity and they are more interested in their Envato elements. Um, yeah, Jamendo, I just got paid that $3 last month. That was my first sale on Jamendo after a whole year of working with them. I'm not sure that it's worth the effort on Jamendo. Uh, Fabio says, hey Eric, do you think it's a good idea to put music in different styles on Pond5 or better idea to make one account for each different music genre? You can't make more than one account because you have to use your ID. And so unless you have multiple IDs, Fabio, you can't do more than one Pond5 account. So I put everything on there and just kind of let it go. Um, let's see here. Uh, also, Matthew Harvey's in the house. Good to have you in the house, man. Uh, Bradford is here. Um, Mohit Dagra, good to see you here today. 
uh, Jonathan Carlisle. Good to be in the house. I did have a good Christmas. It, I think some we heard someone say happy Christmas, and we thought they said nappy Christmas because I think all we did was nap, eat and nap through Christmas. But all right, well, that is stock income. So you might be looking at that and saying 3%. That seems very low. 3% of your income was was stock music. That that almost seems hardly worth the effort. Now, you saw the numbers. You saw that it's, um, I can't call $3,000 not worth the effort. And um, if we look back at that screen real quick, we can see down here that 3,000 actually means about 240 or, or 2,800. I'm not even at 3,000. It means about 240, 250 a month that I'm getting from these places. And hey, that pays a bill. And so I'm not going to be like that upset about it. But at the same time, being 3% of my income means I have to put 3% of my time into it. I can't put my full time into uh, stock music. Uh, I said this at the beginning of the year, and I meant it. I was going to put less into it. I've even thought about doing an experiment this year where I don't put anything into it for the next three months, just for the first quarter. Now, I, I probably won't be able to do that just because I create so much music that there's always music to put up, and I can't stand for music just to sit on my hard drive. So, um, But uh, I, I'm, I, I'm not really focusing my, my time there. Now, that all said, if you do decide to focus on Motion Array itself, just Motion Array, and you decide to do just the things that Motion Array is, is looking for, and they don't put out briefs necessarily. I mean, they do, but they don't put out, oh, this is the music that's doing good. You can try to extrapolate that by looking at what Motion Array uh, puts up there and all that kind of stuff. But they don't really uh, tell you that much about uh, what is super popular. You can try to figure it out yourselves by looking at the polls on Motion Array and see what the, the most popular songs are. And listen to them and try to make music like that. And the ones that the people who seem to do that seem to have more success on Motion Array. Uh, and and again, um, uh, th that can be something that can bring you a surprising amount of monthly income. I'm talking thousands of dollars of monthly income. So I am saying there's a chance. It's just uh, it gonna, it's going to depend on your personality as a composer. Are you willing? to really focus on that kind of music and see if you can make income like that, like my friend Stevie B has made and different things. Um, Mohit says, sir, which libraries are good for a beginner except for Pond5? Um, well, um, for a beginner, Pond5 is really good. Um, let me look at my libraries here and just say that maybe Motion Elements would be a good one. Maybe uh, a song trader is certainly a good place to put your music for opportunities. It does not require you to, um, to, I don't think they have a, you know, they listen to your music and you can join if they like it. I think you could just put, put your music right on there. But I would say um, Motion Elements would be another one that I would suggest. Anybody in the chat right now have any suggestions for this? Um, the music case, if you can get in, it's a little hard to get in. 123RF uh, was where I got my first sale, but that has been a very low paying library this year, only about $17. There's also Deposit Photos and Dreams Time. They seem pretty easy to get in. And uh, that's that's what, um, those are ones that you might look at, uh, I would say, Mohit. Uh, Margo Music, thanks for being here. Good to see you. Um, uh, Arco says one two three RF and one hundred audio. That's one Steve started with. Yeah, I don't I don't know about one hundred audio. Um, I have really backed away from one hundred audio. I've I've done V Fine this year, but that's been a no go. Uh, I think I haven't had a sale all year on their new system, and uh, I put new stuff up to uh, V Fine all the time because it's easy to put it up there now. They have a very easy process. But I've had not much luck with sales at 100 audio. But 123RF is pretty easy to upload. You do have to use uh, FTP. I believe they still make you do that. I haven't put anything up there. Fabio says, hey, Eric, did you put your stuff in BeatStars? How's it performing? Um, 
I have I have put a few things in there, but I haven't been following it. And that is something that I do want to experiment with in the new year in 2023 is Beat Stars. The problem, Fabio, with Beat Stars is that from a um, <clears throat> from a content ID standpoint, putting non-exclusive stuff in there is is tricky, because then if different people use that to make a song. It, like they use a track and they rap over a song or they manipulate it to use it for something else. The problem is that content ID could catch that if it gets uploaded to YouTube and then uh, that would that might be messy. Um, I mean, I guess it is in general, it's messy if content ID uh, gets that. But I'm just I'm just saying that I I'm not sure uh, unless I started creating, uh, thanks for beat stars. Now I, I don't create rap tracks. And so, um, I don't know if, um, if I've done, I, I haven't gotten any emails from beat stars and I only, the only, the other problem with beat stars is you can only put five or maybe 10 free songs up and then you've got to pay them. And I am firmly against paying for anything that's not bringing me money. Um, I don't even pay song trader anymore. So, and uh, as I'll talk about here soon, I don't pay taxi either anymore, but that is another video that will be out next week. Uh, Marley says, uh, Marcus says, VFine rejects all my MA bestsellers. <laughs> uh, they don't really reject much of mine that I know of. Beat Stars needs some promotion from your side, else it's hard to pick up. Okay, that's good to know. And I and by that he means you've got to promote your own beat stars if you want to get people in there. I get that. Um, yeah, you're welcome for that answer. All right, so let's move on here and talk about um, the next uh, most interesting one to us, uh, probably just because again, anything that is what we call passive income, like stock music, you put it up into these libraries and then you just wait for to be paid money, people to download them, and you just get this passive income. It's great. We all want that. And the next version of this is sync licensing, where we are doing this um, not for, um, if you're not familiar with stock license, stock music licensing is more for videos that are on YouTube, uh, corporate uh, kinds of uses where they need to go download a piece of stock video or stock photo or stock music and they go and get that stock piece and they use it in a, in a for a use of some kind. Sync licensing is more to sync your music to television shows, film and advertising, also gaming. There's lots of other ways I think sync licensing is, is expanding as well. And this is my main focus. This is the this is where I started with with licensing 5 years ago, I started really intently writing music for that I thought would, would be good on television shows and behind uh, different uses on television, film, and advertising. Um, now, um, I'm, I've got a, a video coming out about this soon, um, and I talked a little bit on Hello Composers, but I, I approach sync licensing a lot differently than other people do. And the other gurus on that are out there uh, will probably tell you that I'm the wrong. I'm doing it the wrong way. However, I have three and a half libraries. I got. I say half because I'm about to sign with another library. But I've got f four libraries or five libraries that I'm with that are pitching my things out and using my uh, stuff with. I have several hundred songs with with these libraries, and. I have done it the way I wanted to do it. I have written the songs I wanted to write, and um, sometimes they have given me a, a genre that they would like, but usually I'm just making the album and then pitching it and then finding a home for it. Um, now, this year was a very big year in sync licensing. Um, I made my first income from BMI. I saw all year long, uh, I saw placements, and this month I've seen 15 placements so far from some Christmas music that I have. And that's why, again, I've said this before, I said this on Hello Composers a few weeks ago, Christmas music, holiday music is the gift that keeps on giving, folks. And I have made more this year 
on television shows. I haven't received it yet. I probably won't see it till next November, the way that the quarters pay out. And a lot of the stuff was in Europe. So that might take a while to get back to my PRO, which is BMI and pay me that performance royalty. But um, I've seen 15 placements so far this month, uh, just this month. Can you imagine if you're getting 15 placements per month? That's 30 times six. That's uh, you know, that's 180 placements a year. What if you're getting 200, 300, 500, 1,000 placements per year? That's where I'm headed to with sync licensing. Talk about passive long-term income because I look at this as a ongoing long-term income source. And so that's where I am with that. I've had tons of placements this year and I have 10 plus albums that I'm working on right now for 2023 that I'll talk about in another video about my focus for 2023. Now, I don't have a percentage of sync licensing on here because really I just got my first few bucks uh, on my first PM, uh, first BMI check in November. So uh, it would be 1% or something like that. If it was anything, uh, it's, it's, it'd be very small part of what I have made in uh in 2022 because um again i am just starting to get in income from this versus all the steps you have to take and i do have videos about that you can look through um, my playlist about all the sync licensing videos that we have and i'll try to remember to put a playlist right up here if i can remember if not just go to our, our playlist and look for the sync licensing playlist on this channel and you'll see um, a lot of videos that talk about sync licensing, how it works, my journey towards there, how I finally got paid uh, and can now say I am no longer uh, pre-money. I am, I am post-money, uh, but uh, now the job is to get way more out there into sync licensing and get way more uh, placements on, uh, in TV especially, but also film and hopefully advertising and that's uh, where I'm moving to. I've got lots more to talk about, about my plans for sync licensing for 2023, but we'll talk about that in a future video. If this stuff interests you, if you are interested in this kind of stock licensing, and I haven't even got into the, the bulk of the money that I have made this year and how I've made it, but we have a, a mastermind that we are doing, uh, and it starts, in two, it starts a little under two weeks, and I have room for two people only in the Make Music uh, Income Mastermind where we are going to talk about how to make m money with stock music licensing, with sync licensing, with teaching income, with client income, music production, royalty income, mechanical royalties, performance royalties, sync royalties, all of these things we're going to be talking about to get your music income coming up. And, and there's only one way to do that. And that is by concentrating on all of the music incomes. You can pick one, you can pick stock music licensing if you want to, but many people will tell you the, av the average, um, person is only going to make some, and that is, and I have 200, 200 to 300 songs in these, in these libraries and, uh, or at least pieces of music in these libraries. And so um, the people who, if you only have five or 10, you're going to need to do more than one thing uh, other than stock music licensing. And that's what we're going to be talking about in the mastermind. You can find out all about what we're going to talk about in that mastermind. Again, only two spots left starts in about a week and a half. So you want to get into that. Make sure you go to makemusicincome.com slash mastermind. It's in the links below and uh, email me. Email is free. We'll talk see if you fit and uh, if you can join us. All right, uh, I also offer coaching. So if you need to do uh, some one-off coaching and talk about this kind of stuff, I can do that too. All right, let's see what people are saying. Anybody else have any comments here? Uh, ooh, Walt Williams in the house. Good afternoon, I hope your Christmas was great. Probably a noob question, but here goes. I was just wondering if there's any way to tell who purchased my media on Pond5. Hmm. I know there is on Audio Jungle because I traced down a television play I got off of Audio Jungle to uh, a client there. But I don't know about that. Um, I'll have to check that out, but that's a good question. If anybody knows that, let me know here in the chat. Um, 
Hey, Eric, just asking, your, when will your Will I Renew with Taxi video come out? <laughs> uh, yes, the, the cat is a little out of the bag there. <clears throat> but my, my next taxi video is coming out. Um, I shot it last week, so it should be out next week sometime. Definitely here in the next few weeks. I'm editing a lot of videos or trying to get time to edit a lot of videos, but haven't been working a lot over the Christmas break. So uh, that is coming. It is coming, and I hope it won't cause any trouble, but it will be honest. It will be my experience, and it will let you know what I think of Taxi and how Taxi works. It'll probably be the last Taxi video that I do, um, so uh, you'll want to watch out for that. Uh, David D., hello. All great show. Trying to learn the game. Well, David, we'd love to help you. Since this is all stock music, how much content is this for the year that you submitted to create this income? Good question. Um, let's see. I probably put um, 50 to 100 things in stock music this year. Um, my goal is usually to put uh, a good a good handful every month in there. I would have to look back at some of my um, my songs and see when I put them in. Uh, Pond five would probably be the easiest one to look at, but, um, but to answer your question quickly, uh, I probably try to put in <clears throat> two to five songs per month. So times 12 at 60, um, I, I would say 50 to 60 a year, but, um, a lot of it was stuff that I had in last year and that stuff continues to sell. So, um, yeah, uh, not, uh, I didn't go as crazy this year with it because I felt like the experiment, I would experiment around with it just for video sake and, and talk about the income. And I still feel like I did pretty good um, uh, just for really using it as a side income. But I, I'm, well, I'm not going to talk about it yet, but I have, I have plans for stock music and I'll talk about them soon. AV Music says, I've been following you for a while. And I'm curious, for example, how many tracks you produce on average for that kind of income? Only licensing content. Okay, well, this is going to blow your mind, but um, <clears throat> this year I have arranged and, and composed somewhere between 75 and 100 tunes, and that doesn't include cut downs. That's just the actual songs. And um, I think you have to be cranking, folks. And this is really, uh, I was just talking to someone earlier, Andreas and I were just talking, and, uh, you know, You've got to be finding time to to make music and put it out there, and um, I know that that is that might be a bit of a a sticking point for you to say, "Hey, I only have so much time in my in my world." And with stock music, am I guaranteed that that time is going to be worth it? And I get that, but um, uh, I'm always creating a lot. I am usually working on many albums and many singles at a time, not just for myself, but with for and with clients and partners and different people and and some of that stuff goes up and some of that stuff is exclusively for sync libraries at least for the start um i'm starting to find more libraries that are for television uh that are exclusive which means i can't use those on the stock music libraries i can only use those towards these libraries that want to get tv play out of them which is what i want because that is I think over time going to be better money. Uh, the stock market is volatile. <laughs> and I'm not talking about stocks and bonds. I'm talking about stock music licensing. Uh, it, it just changes every day. Some people will will say that um, 2022 was the real mark of the way subscri subscription services take over. And we've seen at Pond5 that the payments have kind of gone down as subscriptions have gone up there. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I think you just have to produce. Um, like I said, I'm probably trying to, to produce for stock libraries two to five songs a month. Uh, sometimes it's more than that, depending on if I'm releasing albums and something else that uh, are personal brands that I don't um, put in in. Uh, exclusive libraries, which is sometimes. Uh, would you say that Pond5 is the best place to start? Absolutely. I'm going to put the video up here. You'll also find it in my videos. Pond5 
is the best place to start, uh, and I still believe it absolutely, especially since um, it, it may not make you a lot of money, but it certainly is a place where people can experiment with putting their music somewhere. It, it, it's the best place for you to make music, put it up there, and just feel like you've accomplished something as, as far as putting it to a library. Now, will anyone find it among the one billion songs that are there, or one million, or whatever it is? Not sure. Um, they find mine, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to get that little dancing panda. Uh, that means you had a sale. But uh, it doesn't mean much when you've, you had the song at $5 and you only make a couple bucks off of that. But a couple bucks is way more than, um, you know how many streams it takes on Spotify to, uh, to equal a couple bucks or two and a half dollars? A whole lot. And so uh, to me, it's just as good a reason to put it there as it is Spotify. Um, Ronan says Christmas music is definitely the way to go. No, I, I absolutely. Uh, the gift that keeps on giving. And it's giving to me, again, a song. One song has got 12 or 13 placements in in uh, throughout Germany, I think, uh, this, this year. Just a, an arrangement of a Christmas song. Excuse me. Um, Marta says, are you planning on doing a sync licensing guide? Yes. I have an ebook uh, coming out here in the next few weeks, uh, sometime in January. It's my second ebook. There'll also be an update of my stock music licensing ebook, and both of those will be on a very good sale for you here coming up in just a few weeks once we get the masterminds going. But uh, that book is is one chapter away from completion. I just have to finish the last part. It's my unique take now on sync licensing, how I did it. and uh, But it's also got information on how you can find sync libraries, um, how I found them, um, a, a few libraries actually that I suggest to you, and then uh, just my general ap approach to getting into the sync licensing game, which is very different from being in the stock music game. Completely different animal and uh, a, a way different way to go. Uh, Rowan says, what songs are you working on next? I've been focusing on workout music since the beginning of the year is all about working out for people. It's really smart. I hadn't thought about that. Right now, I am finishing up a percussion album for a library that was interested in it and hope that becomes the start of a nice relationship with that library. I am, um, I've am i got marching orders, so to speak, on uh, a few album ideas and things from one of my main libraries, my library that is tied with BMG. And uh, one of those orders is one that... Uh, that I was, I, I'm, I'm, I've been trying to get away from a little bit, which is artist music. They, they're really looking for artist music at some of these things. So don't think that unless you do trailer or corporate or some kind of uh, instrumental music that you're not going to make it in sync because they are looking for EPs, but they are looking for EPs from artists, real live artists, not you pretending to be an artist but an actual artist that is on Spotify and has a following. So um, that is something that they are looking for and that I've been told uh, to work on. But uh, up next for me is a classical project that is also kind of got some hip hop elements to it. Um, also up next for me on my list is um, uh a lot of albums that <clears throat> that I finished, I started last year and haven't finished. So I'm trying to finish those up. One is a gospel album, kind of an ambient album, and then uh, hymns, weird hymns uh, album. I've got all sorts of things. I'll, I'll probably talk about those when I talk about what I'm focusing on in 2023, which will be um, probably next week's video maybe. Uh, but yeah, lots of stuff in the wheelhouse. Let's put it this way. I've got at least 15 albums I want to finish by the end of 2023. So got a lot of stuff going on. Um, continuing Jonathan Carlisle, there was also a video on Crucial, which was to, on your to-do list. Yes, it's, it's, um, it's not written yet, but it is on my next videos list. There's a lot on my next videos list. My problem is uh, finding time to uh, edit these videos even even or shoot and write shoot and editing videos is a lot more work than sitting here for an hour and talking to you about 
these things. So apologize for some of you might be like, oh, these videos are so long, but I try to timestamp them and put them in so you can go right to the thing that you want to see. David says, thanks for the answer. You're welcome. Um, do you sell the rights and dreams towel while uploading? No. Um, AV music, definitely there's no shortcut, you bet. Uh, Fabio says, I've submitted my stuff on Motion Array and they rejected it. When do you think I should try again? I submitted 10 songs only. What kind of music are they looking for? Motion Array prefers five songs uploaded to them that are very high quality. Um, the quality seems to be the biggest thing versus the type of songs they are looking for. I would say, um, I'd be interested, Fabio, if you want to say what kind of songs that you uh, that you put up there. That'd be good to know. Ron Patton's in the house. Good to see you, Ron. Uh, Argo says, I'll talk with you on sync in Mastermind. Yeah, we'll, we will definitely be concentrating on sync in our Mastermind. So again, if you are interested in sitting with like-minded people for 12 weeks where we're going to focus on how you can make more music, more income, on sync licensing, on stock music licensing, on producing for other people, on Spotify and DSPs, on um, sheet music and all sorts of things. There's just a lot to talk about publishing, how to get all of your incomes going up. Speaking of incomes, let's move on to uh, the next income. I'm just, I'm not, these don't really have an order, but I'm just going to be talking about uh, ways that I've made music income. Now, this is not going to excite many people. The viewership is going to drop with this one. But to be honest with you, this is something that you likely know how to do. Maybe you've already done it or maybe you've thought about teaching. But I have to say that being a music teacher is a great compliment to your other music incomes. Even if it's just a side gig teaching piano lessons or guitar lessons or something like that, but definitely teaching uh, income has been a godsend for me as I have another monthly or bi-monthly income. I woke up today to payment in my account. Talk about uh, it's, it's not exactly passive income because I have to go there to the school to do it. But it feels like passive income when you have a day off like today and you wake up and there's money in your account. So uh, teaching is uh, complementary to all the other music incomes that you're going to do. But it's also consistent, which is what almost any other kind of music income is not. Um, even the one that I made more on this year, more income from this, uh, which is my client income. That was, that's way more inconsistent. There are some people who pay exactly on time, and I get, I've, I've figured out out ways through the years to get more consistency in client income, music income, but stock music income, sync licensing, none of that is going to be exactly consistent. Hopefully, it will be consistent, but it's probably not going to be as consistent as some kind of day gig that you have or weekly gig that you have now. This could not just be teaching. It could be some other kind of, of, uh, of job that has something to do with music, or at least they respect the fact that you're doing music and they're cool with you, you know, making notes, taking breaks to go out and write songs in your car or in, in your head or whatever, which I've been doing in any job I've been in for the past life. Um, the other thing about this kind of job, Benefits. Yes, benefits from a music job. And the cool thing is I get to take all the lessons that I learn in, uh, with uh, all my clients from being in the music business all these years, all my stock licensing info, all my sync licensing info, I get to share that with the students and that changes all the time. But again, um, this is something that you, you should think about. It does take time out of my day. It'll take time out of your day, um, but it is something that can bring you some well-deserved consistency to you and your family. And uh, wives tend to look at, or I should say partners, um, spouses, or uh, partners tend to look at your income and then look at what you want to do all day and give you the side eye a little bit 
and say, when's this going to make us any money if you're spending all this time on it? So uh, one of the reasons why I went back and got my master's so I could add teaching as an income stream because it's all about income streams. That's why we call this, when I talk about my music income for 2022, I'm not just talking about the, the exciting uh, sync things that happen. That, yes, those were very exciting, but they didn't really impact the bottom line of my bills and paying for my house and all this equipment and everything. So uh, stock music licensing, fun, but 3% of my income. Um, so all of these things uh, are helped by a job that, uh, again, this may not be a teaching job for you. It may be a day gig, but if you don't hit your day gig, don't quit it. Do all this stuff as a side gig at night. Find your hour or two hours a day that you can spend on your music and get it done. And that's what I suggest. So that is uh, that is a big part of what it, it goes for me. Um, getting back to Fabio's question earlier, um, he says, I generally compose acoustic guitar stuff, ambient music, and also rock metal music. Those songs can be found on my instrumental YouTube channel. I've submitted those on Motion Array. I will gather more and better material and try to submit again next year. Um, take a look at my friend, um, um, our friend who uh, made quite a bit of music and got into uh, Motion Array rather easily. His name is escaping me for right now. Um, he also does very well on Spotify. And... His name is Dan Barracuda. Take a look on um, on Motion Array. Just search for Dan Barracuda. I believe he goes by by that name on there. And Dan does uh, acoustic guitar stuff. Listen to what he's doing. It's very simplistic. Um, I, I get a lot of stuff into Motion Array that is super simplistic solo piano. And um, they seem to to really like that kind of thing at Motion Array. Um, as a matter of fact, that might, well, I can't remember what I started with them at, but um, I would absolutely look at that because um, that is what um, he got into Motion Array with because that's his main style. Um, so you might check that out because uh, I know that is something that got in this year. Uh, Bradford says, wonder if you have an ebook on how to set up the business model for this, i.e., what do we need? A distribution company, a PRO, LLC, DBA. What things do we need to set up all this up? Oh boy, um, <laughs> I'm not the guy who is going to tell you the great business steps to take. Uh, I I, um, I am not great with money. However, I probably could do have an ebook that could talk about um, how to set yourself up with the PRO how to set yourself up with um, uh, sound exchange and MLC and content ID and all the things that you need to set up yourself with in order to um, in order to find success and have long-term success. There are just some things that you have to be part of that you have to have going on. Um, how to set your Spotify up and all that kind of stuff. I think it's important to get... Uh, to work with somebody like DistroKid or somebody and put your music up there and get all of that going at one time. Here's the thing. Nothing will get, no money will come in if you don't do anything. Let me say that a different way. You'll get no money if you do nothing. Um, and so uh, setting up a PRO like with BMI is free. Um, I'm not sure if you need an LLC or even a DBA these days, if you're just working online. Um, <clears throat> and to track income, if you're thinking about that, I'm not sure you need to worry about an LLC until you get to a place where you're making. Um, I had to because um, you know my income approaches six figures every year, and so it's important that I have an LLC to take all that money into and then to do a lot of the, um, to take away self-employment tax. Again, it depends on where you live. But um, uh, find a good accountant that understands the music industry if you can. And if you don't have one, um, uh, I'm, I'm sure that you can find one online. I'd suggest mine, but he'd be probably like, no more music clients, uh, please. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, um, 
yes, check out Dan Barracuda. You'll like that. All right, so let's move on now to, um, uh, let me answer, answer this last question from Mohit here. Sure, should I change my exclusive account to non-exclusive on Audio Jungle? You don't have to change it. You can start a non-exclusive one as well as having an exclusive one. So I have both and uh, use them for two different, um, one, my main one is for everything. And then I have another one that is focused on another brand. So um, I don't do as much with that exclusive brand because I don't want to put as much exclusive stuff in there because I, I want to use it in other places. Uh, the Pond Fives and the Motion Arrays, I want to have that, m that music working as many places as possible. But you can have both, and you definitely should have a non-exclusive account. Um, I probably have an ebook. Does this mean you have one or you will make one? Um, well, it means that I probably could make one. Um, after the sync licensing ebook, I think it's important to do an ebook on, uh, and, and the, by the way, all of these ebooks are probably leading up to a, a grand make music income course later this year that I'll be putting together that will hit all of the major music incomes that I get and that I work with because that is something that uh, I've been thinking about for a long time. It just takes a while to shoot those. It doesn't take us that long to write eBooks, but it takes a long time to shoot uh, all, the, all the video for a course, but uh, it is in my mind. And, and it's something that uh, I, am, I am really focused on for this year is to improve uh, and to offer more things that you can get through this channel. So uh, yeah, I'd say after um, sync licensing ebook likely um, I do want to talk about music production as an income stream and I do want to talk about um, uh, Spotify and getting your music out as an artist I think this is another thing that people really need to know as far as uh, how to get it out there and how to get people to know about it how to get people to listen and and growing your Spotify and your Apple and Amazon and your your income from uh, mechanical royalties and, and actually performance royalties from Spotify and all the DSPs. So uh, that is also a book that's coming up here very soon. All right, so let's move on to uh, the next thing here, and that is my client slash partner income. And when I say client or partner, I have been converting my um, music clients, the people who I just used to make uh, albums for and EPs for and singles for and still do, um, I've been converting those people into partners where we still make their music that goes on Spotify. And if they still make physical product, they, we make the physical product. I help them make their websites. I help them do their, their, um, their, uh, websites, their, their social media. I help them set up their photo shoots. I help them do all that kind of stuff. I've been doing this for a very long time, but what I've been doing lately is trying to not convince, but um, <clears throat> introduce the idea that we could also take this music into the stock music, lic uh, the sync licensing area. Now, some clients have become uh, stock music producers on their own and have started to make some money with Motion Array and start to put stuff in Pond5 and stuff like that. So I do uh, work on that with clients. So that is something that's available. If you're interested, you can get in touch with me. If you'd like some some uh, coaching or, or, or monthly uh, work towards getting your music out there, um, I do help clients do that sometimes. But um, <clears throat> as you can see, this is a pretty big part. If you take this and this, uh, that's 94% of my income comes from those two things. And you might say, wow, uh, that doesn't, that doesn't bode well for me as a stock music or sync licensing or royalties. But I have to say that the, the reality is that, um, music income comes from that thing that you can do that makes you the most, uh, on a, on a monthly basis, uh, especially if you want to quit your job and do that. And the reason these are so high for me is that because I want to live full time doing music and not just working uh, another job that has nothing to do with music. So 
um, music income is important to me. So, and uh, I could also call this producing income or music label income, but this income, this 54% of what I make, and, and it is approaching six figures this year uh, from what I can tell, gross, uh, gross, gross income. But um, this comes from working for people. Um, it's not much different than when you hear someone talk about writing for a brief, writing for a company that tells you what they want, um, that is paying you. And so you have to do the work that they ask you to do. And so I do videos, I do lots of different work for clients, and these clients uh, still make up a big part of what my income is on a monthly basis and help me pay my bills. So um, this is a big part of things, um, both of these two my, um, are, are very big parts of how I pay the bills every month still. Now, am I hoping that will change? Am I hoping that my... Uh, you know, what I would like to see is sync licensing become 40%, 50% of my income. I would like to see this number go down. Um, and if Or if it go, doesn't go down, I will likely be subbing out a lot of that and just strategizing with my clients and my partners. Uh, but that is the basics of my income. The other last thing I haven't talked about here is my royalties income. Now this is 3%, it probably might be closer to 5%, maybe it may be approaching 10% actually. But um, royalties is, it, 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 approach, it approaches 10% if I include stock music licensing income, which I kind of think of as sync royalties, because it really is. Uh, stock music income is actually synchronization income, I think of, as, I, I can't think of another way to really classify it. It's not mechanical, it's not performance, it's more, It's even though it's for videos, even though it's for YouTube videos, it's still music that is synced and you're getting paid upfront by the library. Um, I call that sync income, so uh, sync licensing income. So uh, my royalties income is coming up. I did see uh, mechanical royalties go down a bit, which is mechanical royalties mean mainly money from straight from Spotify, um, all those kind of things, because I did not do a lot of pushing of my Spotify this year, even though I did put a bunch on Spotify and all the other engines. When I say Spotify, just know that I mean not just Spotify. I mean all the other uh, Apple and Amazon. It's just, it just that Spotify is probably the biggest the biggest one that gets the most streams. But my mechanical royalties were down, didn't have as much sales in CDs uh, at all this year and, and down in sales of downloads and things like that, which are all all down anyway. Um, but my, my Spotify slash streaming royalties were down a bit this year. Performance royalties were up as far as what I was paid from BMI, especially thanks to this last check, and I hope that continues to go up. This will likely, uh, like I said, I hope that sync licensing really pays out through it through royalties. So um, there are the, there is the opportunity to get up fronts, which what we would call sync royalties. Again, my sync royalties went down this year mainly because Motion Array went so far down for me this year. But otherwise, um, they have uh, they have really sunk. But um, but otherwise, other than Motion Array, everything's gone up, which is kind of great. Um, and so we'll see how this and all the placements I got this year. Um, I won't know until the next quarterly check from my PRO. Um, that one may or may not be. I don't remember if I had many things used. But from this point on, uh, there's going to be times when I don't know if things are used. And uh, I won't know, like this last check, I got $66 from one I didn't even know that was used on a television show. So with this focus towards getting stuff into television, stuff getting stuff into sync possibilities, uh, the PRO checks are going to increase, I hope, um, we all hope. And you stick with the channel, I'll let you know for sure. Um 
The other thing that I have here is my brand channels. You're watching one right now, which is Make Music Income. I also have Hello Composers. Both of these have brought in, get ready for this, but they've brought in about as much as Sync, Sync uh, stock, sorry, stock Music has this year. Both my brand channels have gone from zero income at the beginning of this year to somewhere around the same three or 4,000 maybe in coaching and, and eBooks and things like that. It could be more than that. So this could be another three or 5% that I could count. Now I counted this already, I believe in my client income up there, but next year I'll have this separated out. Um, but I am really happy with the way these channels have grown. Thank you so much if you're watching this now, if you've come along this channel, would love to have you as a subscriber and just hang out and let me teach you all these kind of things up. But here's the good news. Total music brands, all my music brands are up quite a bit. Um, I'm, I'm excited that uh, a lot of my music brands have, have gone up. When I look at my music brands, um, my, my entire um, personal music brands, uh, they went up by about $1,000 this year and show no sign of, of coming down. Actually, almost 2000 extra this year uh, on my personal brand. So very excited that, um, that these channels are taking off, that my music is taking off on sync and getting placements. And now I've started to see income from that. I've started to see um, lots more um, opportunity um, to teach. And uh, of course, with the teaching income, that came out of nowhere this year and added, you know, 40% of my yearly income to my bottom line this year. And so that has been a great, great blessing. Um, I've learned a lot this year what I want to be doing and what I don't want to be doing. And at the beginning of this year, at the beginning of 2022, I talked about some of the things that I wanted to stop doing. And, and, and some of the things that I thought were going to help and they did, um, I knew that I wanted to get a teaching job and I did, I knew that I wanted to get sync finally, uh, getting a lot more placements and getting money in. And I did, I wanted to pay less attention to stock and, and see it not really go down that much. And I did now it went down, but only because motion array drastically changed the way they paid. So I'm pretty excited for, um, for the way that it's it's happened, I'm I'm pretty excited about um, uh, the way that the 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 years happened with total music uh, brands being up. Uh, David says, "Do you suggest BMI or ASCAP?" Uh, personally, I suggest BMI um, only because I'm on BMI. I've never been with ASCAP. Um, I have heard both. I've heard it both ways uh, that. BMI is better for licensing. I've heard ASCAP's better for licensing. It, it depends on who you ask, I think. But I have so many hundreds of songs in uh, BMI. There's no reason for me to change right now at all. So, and BMI is free to sign up as a writer. And I would just go ahead and do that and just be a BMI writer. And boom, you'd be, you'd be set. Um, well, folks, that's probably about all. I'll, I'll end on an upbeat note here that total music brands are up. I've got a lot of exciting uh, ideas for 2023. My focus uh, video is coming up. Either Steve and I will be talking about it or I'll be talking about it. But I have some pretty radical, um, some pretty radical ideas about 2023 and what I think of uh, how I'll be doing things. It might be a little different, might be a little bit more focused on the things that have really worked this year and, and, and the things that not on the things that haven't, if that makes any sense. I think it's important for us to follow uh, all, to make sure to do a really good year in review. Look at the amount of time you've spent. If, it, if you've been on stock music and you've been spending tons of time putting stuff into VFind music and like me at the end of the year, have zero, zero income uh, from it, then you need to quit spending so much time on VFind Music. I think the other thing we need to, 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 
to do here is we need to be careful that we don't spend too much time on things that um, that that just aren't worth our focus. So let me write this down. Let's not do this. You need to quit focusing on the wrong things. And we'll talk about this more in the 2023 video. But if if you're focusing on your numbers, and, and I'm as guilty about this as anybody, I probably just out of habit check my uh, my sync, uh, my, my stock numbers every day, especially if I get a payment notice or something like that, or a, or a, you could, you just sold a song or whatever. I will check that. And I've been, as you can see on, on this, I keep a record every month of how much I'm making on everything. I just like to watch the numbers and I'm a spreadsheet guy. And so I like to just watch how things flow and it, it gives me the ability to, to see uh, when new incomes come along and when a new library pays me for the first time and should I put more work into that. Uh, but we've got to quit focusing on the wrong things. We've got to quit focusing on things that only bring us a tiny little bit of money and we've got to focus back on our craft. And that's one of my goals for 2023 is craft. But I, I have to quit focusing on things. And, and I think one of the, uh, like I said, this may look like a, uh, a, a, a really a big failure to go from 44.85 to 2880 uh, in in stock music. But again, if you take out motion array out of that, I actually was 300 above what I did last year. So um, I think you really have to quit focusing on things that are not working as as well and focus on the things that are working. If you find that you make 90%, it's the 80-20 rule. If you make 80% of your income from three libraries, you should focus on those three and give 20% of effort to the, the ones that don't pay you. We've got to give the majority of our time and our effort to the libraries and the music incomes that make us the most income. Um, Mohit, thanks for being here. Have a great new year as well. Um, Arco says, I just got improved a lot in composing next year. I'll get into more sync libraries and stock music and also hope music college accepts me. Yes, uh, Arco is a very industrious young man working hard to get uh, finishing a degree now and looking to get into another degree. Those will only serve you well, Arco. Uh, and those are not focusing on the wrong things, but they are focusing on the right things. Well, I hope this has been interesting to you guys uh, and, and you have... Uh, figured out maybe something that you could focus on for this year. I'll, I'll, I'll do a whole focus video about what I'm going to be doing uh, for 2023. Um, that'll be next week. And we'll be also remember to go down and, and take the poll, the survey monkey poll about a uh, quick 10 question poll about where you made any music income last year would really love for you to go and take that. You'll find that in the description below. Um, also, uh, make sure last days, last week to get into the mastermind because at, at that point we'll have started it already. It won't make sense to add new people in. So if you're interested, go to make music income.com slash mastermind. If you're just curious, just email me, just, just go to that page and there's a place to email me because you do have to qualify to be part of that mastermind. I also have maybe one slot left in the hello composers mastermind. And you can find out about that here as well. So everybody, thanks so much for being here today. Had a lot of fun uh, with you. Um, uh, audio engineering and music producing is a great income for music. And more of you should be doing that. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, hey, Jonathan, have a great 2023. Have a great New Year's. Everybody have a great weekend. Arco, thank you. Fabio, happy new year to you, my friend. Happy new year to everybody. Thanks for being here on today's show. We'll see you next time. And uh, everybody wave, say happy new year. Um, be careful out there. People are crazy on new years. Keep safe. Write a lot more music. Compose over this break. If you got some days off, spend it composing. Spend it uh, making something. All right, everybody, ending the broadcast. 
see you later. Thanks for being here today. We'll see, we'll see you next time.